Alright, today I'm going to show you all how to tie a jack candy. Um, it's kind of like surf candy, but I think it's a little more useful in murkier waters. Um, it's really simple to tie, really quick to tie. You're just going to start with some extra large bead chain eyes at the front. Go about a quarter of the hook length back. Get these suckers wrapped in here. And now you're going to wrap to the back of the hook. And you'll put it about where the tip of the hook is. It doesn't have to go all the way back. You're going to take some craft fur. You can use craft fur. You can use really anything. There's streamer hair, um, polar fiber. It's, it is up to you what you want to use. But you'll just take a... I don't know, about an inch by inch square of it out. And you're going to straighten it. Pick out some of the longer hairs. Make sure you pick out all these shorter hairs. Um, if you have a brush, you can use that to get it out. It's not really necessary to have a brush, honestly. And so what I do is I, I pinch it back here where I'm gonna cut it. Take a nice snip and even it up. And then I'm going to capture it right here at the back of the hook. Get it all tightened down. And then I'm going to wrap under it. And this keeps it from fouling up on the hook whenever you're casting. You wrap under it a few times, keep it sticking away from the hook. And then I'll even go as far as to post it which means you're going to wrap around the material itself without going around the shank of the hook. And this creates kind of a post. And you can see how it's sticking out really nice and straight now. And so the next part of this is we're going to get some orange chenille. And this is the cactus chenille. We're going to go ahead and tie this on at the back. You're going to go ahead and wrap this same way that you're wrapping your bobbin. You're going to come forward and I actually like to pull the fibers of it back whenever I wrap because it actually gives you a better, better bunch of material as you go forward. Alright, so we got a pretty good amount on here. I usually wrap about half of the length of the hook. And I like to keep it in the bag. And I'll show you on the next step why I keep it in the bag while I wrap it. You're going to get some white estes, estaz, however you want to say it. With a hick accent, it's kind of hard to pronounce anything for this stuff. And you're just going to tie this in right where you ended your orange cactus chenille. Wrap up to the front of the hook. And this is why I like to keep it in the bag. As I'm wrapping, the whole thing is contained in the bag while I have plenty left. And whenever I cut my material, it all stays in one spot, stays in the bag, really easy to control. Now I go over the top of the eyes once each way and lastly on a third time I do one wrap at the front and then I capture what I have left. Here's another reason it's nice to have it in the bag. If I have it in the bag I can wrap while moving the material up and down keeps me from being hindered. So we will cut this front, pull as much material back as we can, now this guy looks goofy but I guarantee you if you're out there blind casting you want something that's flashy because if you're blind casting it means the water is a little murky, you can catch jacks and ladyfish on stuff like this, doesn't have to be this color pattern or anything like that and you'll, you'll get some fish. So I like to bar the back of it just really quickly. You don't have to do the whole thing. Just adds a little bit of character. 
and I like to use my clear glue every time I mess this up. Clear cure glue. Just make kind of a little head on there. And then I'll do the bottom. And there you have it. Nice little fly to catch you a jack. <laughs>